A 75-year-old grandfather from Aberdeenshire has been accused of trespass when on New Year's Eve, or more like New Year's Day, at around sort of one, two o'clock in the morning, he asked the neighbour to turn down the music, to turn down the party noise. He was looking after his uh, baby granddaughter and his own daughter needed to get up, get up at 5.30 in the morning uh, to go to work. So he simply asked that this music be turned down. Now, instead of the usual neighbourly thing, which would perhaps be to bring the loud party inside and show a little bit of courtesy, they actually made a criminal allegation against him, accusing him of trespass when he went to their property with the baby in arm, simply asking for that courtesy that would allow them all to go to sleep. Now, completely unexpected. This wouldn't happen in the United Kingdom. You wouldn't end up on the other end of trespass criminal cases against you that's going to result in a travel ban. Ian can't leave the UAE now. He's stuck and potentially facing years in prison. Now, why did she take a criminal case against him? Possibly because she thought he might take a criminal case against her. It's quite common in the UAE, even if you follow the letter of the law, to be the subject or the victim of false criminal allegations against you in order to protect the accuser. And that's because whoever makes the first criminal allegation is going to be supported and believed more so by the prosecutor and the police than the person who comes second. So the preemptive criminal case is often used as a method of protection. Furthermore, and as we've seen in so many cases in the past over the 60, 16 years that we've uh, been running this organisation, it's also really common for false cases to be taken against foreign nationals in order to extort money out of them, to request financial compensation in order and in return for dropping a police complaint against them. So Ian is 75 years old. He was supposed to already be back in Scotland. His wife's had to return. They've never been separated. So this is an extremely traumatic time. He's also worried about his health. His insurance has run out and he's really suffering in Dubai. He's been told that if convicted, he could face years in prisons notorious for human rights abuses. These are prisons that have warranted investigation by the United Nations. It's the sole reason that the UK courts won't extradite people to the UAE because of the real risk of torture and serious and egregious human rights violations that we have seen committed against other uh, British citizens in the past. So we've already called on um, Ian's MP in Scotland, who's making representations on his behalf. The FCDO has been in contact. And we've also asked various other uh, members of parliament to make representations to the UAE's uh, Ministry of Foreign Interior Foreign Affairs and also the UAE's ambassador to the United Kingdom. Now, these are the kind of cases that are such deterrence of growth in the UAE and Dubai. They make it completely unsafe for British citizens to visit. People don't know whether it's going to be Christmas vacation or if it's going to be a complete nightmare with two years in jail. Now, this simply has to stop if we're going to see this kind of marketing going on in newspapers, and if we're going to be lured to visit a country where even the most law-abiding citizen can end up on the wrong side of the law. I'm Rada Sterling from Detained in Dubai, and I hope we can see Ian home soon.